talk about the Yoga Sutra. It's kind of the one of the first Yoga Sutras that a lot of people come to know. Um, and it's just called Stira Sukha Asanam. And it's, um, if you want to know where it is in the Yoga Sutra, if you have a copy of the Yoga Sutra, it's Sutra 2.46. And um, basically the word Stira means steadfast or stable, steady. And Sukha is um, sweet. It's actually the word for sugar in another language. Um, I think it's Farsi. I think my friend Yasmin was telling me that in Farsi, the word for sugar is suka. And um, so sweetness, uh, but in the translation, in the sutra, it's, it's sweetness and it's e easiness, easefulness. And then asanam is the postures of yoga. So the whole, con you know, that stira sukha asanam um, is how we should feel when we are in our asanas. We should feel steady and steadfast and easeful and sweet. Um, and really, it takes a lot of embodied practice to develop this skill. Uh, it's taken me years to develop it, and I'm sure it has for you as well, that this sense of not pushing through our postures and muscling through, especially if you are strong and you have the capacity to just, I'm gonna muscle through this, um, we can lean into our strength when we don't have to. And learning efficiency in the body is a beautiful thing. Um, finding the path of least resistance can mean so much when we are trying to work with something in our mind, as well as when we're working with something in our body. So this capacity to uh, be embodied um, and what does that mean? You know, just to be fully present in your soma, you know, in your, in your full being, body, mind, and spirit, takes a lot of practice to get to the deeper layers of your physicality instead of just the muscularity of our form. And this sutra really teaches us that we need to have this balance of feeling very steady and very easeful. And, um, you know, I, I remind, I try to remind all the time to look for that in your body. Um, but I'm wondering how it is for you, you know, when a lot of times I think people tend to go, you know, one extreme or the other, like I'm going to be st steady and strong here. But then when I try to back away and find ease, I lose my strength. So, you know, where is it that you can find both simultaneously? So the word yoga means to unify, to come into union. And it takes a lot of deep self-observation and awareness to unify these forces of stability and ease. So in your practice, when you're looking for that, um, I'm hoping that some of the practices we did over the last few days of navel radiation and yielding um, can really help you develop these skills of being embodied in a deeper way instead of just our muscular strength. Um, and then of course, always the breath is such a beautiful way for us to channel um, the balancing forces here. So if you can't breathe, um, chances are you're not yielding very well, you're not um, finding the ease and you're pushing through something. Um, and just the opposite can happen as well. You know, if you get stuck in a breath that isn't deep, you can kind of um, not give that full stable force to the body. So um, it doesn't matter what asana you're practicing, whether you're doing a back bending sequence or a forward bending sequence or standing on your head or anything, it doesn't matter, the pose doesn't matter. What matters is how we access ourselves in any posture. So let's try to look for this um, today and keep in mind this sutra. You know, the, the sutras are our guide to help us along the yogic path. <clears throat> and if our goal is to be embodied and present in the moment, Stira Sukha Asanam, the steadiness and sweetness of a practice can really uh, profoundly impact us. All right, so find a comfortable seat, close your eyes, and know um, that you don't have to be seated. You can stand up to do this. You can lie down. You can take all sorts of seated postures. You can be in a cross-legged or in Virasana, anything that works for you. So, with an upright, healthy posture, see what it feels like to find your spine. And try to notice when you prop yourself up, when you try to be too strong in your opening, and what does it feel like to fall and not open very much at all, kind of return to the slumped posture that we often find. 
So find the middle way where the steadfast, easeful nature lives. And when you find it in the spine, when you feel spacious and stable, start to bring your breath into that place. Soften your eyes. If you are looking for more ease in the body, find little pockets that you have a, a very close attachment to that you easily can change. So often our eyes are a good place to be, begin because we know what it feels like to relax our eyes. I, at least I hope so for you. And if it isn't your eyes, find some other place in you that easily relaxes, that when you cue up your awareness in that spot and tell yourself to let go, that your body just responds very quickly. So where do you have that deep awareness? And start there and then travel through the rest of the body, finding that balance of sense of spacious opening, steadfast stability, sweetness. And even if there's places that feel um, tender, painful, tight, compressed, whatever the sensa sensations are that are uncomfortable for you, can you infuse those areas with a little bit of ease, a little bit of um, the breath just moving through you? What burdens can you drop just a bit, even if you have to pick them back up again, even if it's something that you're steadily working with, can you put the suitcase down and let it rest while we practice? Smooth out the breath as best as you can. Discover your exhales, lengthening them out as best as you can. And go ahead and place your palms together at your heart. Lift your heart. Bow in, find that deep inner space. So the midline, whatever the sense of deep knowing that you have a, a sense of embodiment in the deep center. Find that and let your stability come from right there, where, whatever you're accessing. Can you commit to stability in this place? Offer an intention for your practice. What do you need stability and ease for? release your hands and let's go ahead and come onto your back. Okay. So lie down. <clears throat> All right, so take a moment to let your body be in any way it wants to be. You can spread your legs and arms wide. You can be close in. Anything that is serving you right now. Let your whole body drop. Take a moment to give way. Feel that yielding, giving into the earth. All right, and then let's stretch our arms overhead. Feel that deep length. Of course, if you have a shoulder issue, I know there's a few of you in class today with some shoulder issues. Just see what it feels like. Maybe you don't want to have your arm up. Maybe you'd rather have it halfway up or down. Okay, so find that sense of opening through the sides of your body. And then bring your knees into your chest and give yourself a little hug. Rock around a little bit. Okay, and circle your knees. I'll go one direction. And then circle your knees another direction. Just finding that sense of balance across your pelvis as you rock from side to side. All right, and then find steadiness and let's open our knees away and bring them back in. Just warming up the hip joints a little bit. Noticing how different your two sides feel or maybe how similar your two sides feel. So what are you sensing? If we want to develop this inner sensing of steadfastness and ease in our body, really requires a, um, a bit of attention 
um, diving in. You know, we're, this is a beautiful practice of embodiment. So let yourself um, get to know the inner places and try to be open-minded and explore sensation instead of expecting sensation. Wiggle out your feet, hug your right knee into your chest, give it a good squeeze. Feel your spine grow here. We're gonna do some practices today that really involve um, some need for spacious spine. So start to access that here. Let's switch legs, left knee into the chest, right leg on the floor. Wiggle your toes and roll through your ankles here. Find some compression, any kind of engagement you want in that knee. Extend the spine. What does it feel like to reach from the center out through the crown and the tail? And then bring both knees into your chest. And we're gonna bring both legs straight up in the air. Arms stay down at the ground. Um, maybe have your palms up so the heads of the arm bones roll open. This is a lot of work, so feel free if your back's bothering you to bend your knees to do this instead of having your legs straight. And just start to wake up the core a little bit. So you can remember that you're trying to take care of yourself here and not grit and muscle through. You want to have core stability, and of course, we're going to be accessing and working with our muscular strength. But try to notice if your breath goes away, if you lose the sense of ease in your body. So what does it feel like to have stableness, but also length in the spine? And then we're going to bring our knees back into our chest. Put our feet on the floor, wide on the mats, feet on the edges of your mat, and start to windshield wiper your knees. And once again, your arms can be a part of this, or maybe your arms want to relax and not be a part of this. Okay, so you can reach as knees go right, reach left arm up overhead as knees go left, right arm comes up overhead, and just finding what's being served in your body by this. How is your breath? What kind of feeling are you getting in the sides of your body? All right, and then let's, if you're comfortable with your arms overhead, bring them overhead. If you're not, bring one arm or whatever you got. And we're gonna turn our body into the letter C. So walk your legs to the left, and we're gonna inch our torso left. Don't go so far that you lose your capacity to keep your right shoulder and your right hip on the floor. Once again, that right arm can be in whatever comfortable position it wants to be. Just open up not only the side of your ribs and you know the outer rim of the body, but see if you can feel the outer rim of your vertebrae on that right side. Just opening the side windows of the vertebrae a little bit, letting some light in, peek out, let the spine peek out through the side windows. And then come back to center and let's do the same thing on the other side. So walk your feet to the right, inch your legs over, inch your torso over, turn your body into a strange semi, um, you know, kind of like a crescent moon shape, okay? Left shoulder, left hip stays grounded instead of rolling. Open up the rim of the body. So you'll feel it in various places, but see if you can also sense into the vertebrae themselves. So dive deep into the body and sense the opening of the um, pockets, the side pockets. This is where a lot of nerve roots come out. So just open up some gaps, widen some space. How's your breath? And then come back to center. Find yourself coming to the floor, bend your knees, neutral spine here, and just rock, push off your feet and rock your spine. Maybe you wanna bring your knees to your head and rock side to side. Whatever kind of moving you can do to ease off what the spine feels. Okay, let's roll over onto our side and come up onto our hands and our knees. Okay, so as you find your way into onto all fours, just notice what's here. So before we start moving in cat cows, feel the long spine. Allow the femur bones to draw back toward the wall behind you. Stabilize through your core a bit. Not so much that you're guarding and gripping and tensing, and locking, but just enough to feel that you have some strength to hold your body with. Reach your crown and tail away from each other. Find the stable center. And okay, now let's start to breathe while we're here. Inhale, don't, still don't move to cat cows yet. Inhale, relax the belly, let it fall. Expand the ribs. 
exhale, draw everything in toward the midline. So we're working with, you know, the corset around us, that deep transverse abdominus muscle in our belly. So notice on your inhales, can your ribs, your bottom ribs, ribs flare in all directions? Can you feel them flare in the back, the sides? Is your waist widening and broadening? And then as you exhale, can you shrink everything back down a little bit? And there's a lot of muscles that help you exhale um, in your back. There's a lot of muscles in your back. There's obviously your diaphragm, but there's also this deep transverse abdominis. So one more time, steadiness in the body. Inhale, flare and widen and loosen and exhale, engage. Now we get to start releasing that and move into some cat cows. You can arch and round the spine at your own pace. Make sure you're breathing as you move. I like to inhale as I arch my back and look up, lift my tail and exhale to reach the navel in, tail head down. So just see what feels good in your body. And then after a few passes, feel free to move anything around. So even here, you can be on one arm. You can kind of take a lighter load in one arm if you feel like being on all fours is a little too much for your one shoulder. Any kind of movement that you want to do. And then stretch back to child's pose. Arms can go down at your side, not overhead. Arms can go overhead, what's feeling good in your body. Find your breath and rock a little bit here. Let your forehead melt if it's touching the floor. Even if it's not touching the floor, let it melt. Soften your jaw. Find those places that you have easy access to let go. And if you have little tickets in your body that open the gates of surrender, know where they are so you can go there first and teach the rest of your body from that sensation. Let's walk the hands over to the left side of our mat. Once again, the right or left arm, you know, you can always keep one arm down if there's tenderness in a shoulder. The other thing that sometimes helps with shoulders is if you take your arms wider apart and flip your hands over. There's all sorts of ways you can experiment with different vectors of movement that might change the sensations that your shoulders are feeling. And if you can't, if you experiment and you can't find something that eases it, the pain off, then back away. And then let's walk to the other side. Once again, we're finding those little side pockets through the vertebrae. Release the base of the skull. Notice the breath. back up to all fours. Another thing that can help the shoulder is don't lift your arm all the way up. Only do the drop down of our twist that we often start with. So find your way into the twist. Your opposite hand will press into the floor a bit to give you a little more sensation. And now those vertebrae that were um, opening on one side or the other, now we're rotating. So just see what it feels like to um, Feel the muscles in between your vertebrae as you breathe in and out. What kind of sensation do you have in the small little gaps from vertebrae to vertebrae? And then inhale, come back up. Once again, the arm can come up in the air. Maybe the arm shouldn't come up in the air. Change sides if you want the arm to come up. And always with shoulders, there's lots of vectors of movement. So you can come out like we often do. You can also lift your arm in front of you and try lifting through like that. There's lots of different channels to take, so see what might experiment. You know, the the um, blessings of being in your body is that you're the only one who knows how it feels. So experiment and modify anything that you need for your body, anything at all. How is your breathing? Of course, you might feel the space between your shoulder blades, and that's awesome. But see if you can also feel the subtlety of your vertebrae. And then come back up, come on to all fours, and let's find the stable place again. We're going to take our right leg straight back behind us, engage left arm out in front of us, find your breath. When you're in this cross lateral work, feel it both in your right glute and your left shoulder, but also feel it in the center of your body. So notice what kind of um, hugging in you can do. Can the left shoulder blade and the right glute find each other? Can the right pec and the left hip flexors find each other? Okay, 
and then let's release that hand and knee down onto the ground and come to the second side. Left leg is coming out. Find your stability before you lift your arm. Maybe you don't want to lift your arm. And if you want the balance, but you don't want to have an arm overhead, you can always just bring your hand to your heart and just hang out here. So you have that sense of working with the balance and the stability without taxing your shoulder joint. Crown and tail move away from each other. Can you feel the long spine here? Can you feel that sense of hugging your left glutes and your right lats? Find them to each other. Can you feel your left pecs and your right hip flexors connecting toward each other? So these two crisscross lines in the body. And then also find the breath. Deep inhale, flare. Exhale, engage. And then place your knee and hand down one more time, coming back to child's pose. Relax your hips toward your heels. Rock a little bit if it feels nice to do some rocking. And then find your way to dog pose. So dog pose can be on the floor. Dog pose can be on a couch with your hands on a couch. One hand on a couch. Dog pose can be on a wall. We're, we're all going to do it on a wall in just a moment. Um, but for now, you find the place that's best for your body. Extend through the spine. Feel the femur bones lift up toward the pelvis and stretch back. Relax your neck. If you have tension swirling around in your shoulders, what would it feel like to stretch one ear away from the shoulder here and then stretch the other ear away? Just move your head a little bit. Okay, what can you let go of? Is there some ease to be found along with the stability? So which do you access first? Do you find ease first and then seek your stability? Do you find your stability first and then seek your ease? Is there any places where you find it simultaneously? And it's okay if you can't. Um, you know, going back and forth is fine as we learn to unify. It comes with time. The sense of melding the two comes, but it takes a long time for us to refine our practice in that kind of way. So just be where you are. Root into the index finger rounds. Feel that sense of strength, strengthening your arms, moving them toward each other so you feel that your shoulders are not the only burden here. When you hug your hands toward each other, you access your lats, you access your serratus muscles. There's deeper muscles in that um, thoraco, um, the junction where your, your, scapula and your scapula and your rib cage meet. See if you can feel them stabilize with each other. All right, let's walk forward, come into Uttanasana. Let your knees bend a whole lot and bobble around your head, wiggle around your shoulders, wiggle around your tail. Anything that you feel is helpful for easing the length of your spine. While you're here, see if you can lift the sit bones and feel the sacrum lift up so that the top of your, um, or the tailbone lift up so the top of your sacrum can follow your vertebrae down toward the floor. Try not to get it into a tug of war where your tailbone is pulling down toward the floor and your spine is too. Lift your tailbone up toward the sky and feel the ease in your back. Okay, let's bend our knees and come up to stand. Okay, find your breath and we're just going to rock a little bit here. So just going swinging back and forth and you can do anything you want with your arms. Your arms can be out. Your arms can be up, your arms can be down, you can, your arms can be very loose, you can take some cactus arms. All my, my only intention for this is to just loose up some, loosen up some of the muscles along the spine. Find your breath. Notice your obliques. All right, and then relax. We're gonna find a wall or a table or the edge of a chair or a couch, whatever you have in your house. And we're gonna come into a half dog. So I happen to have a wall, so I'm gonna use a wall, but whatever you can find, I'm sure you have something. Right, and you can bend your knees here, you can straighten your legs here. So whatever you're finding for this posture, once again, see if you can sense that the elongation of your spine is supported by the stability through the core muscles on your exhales. So lengthen crown and tail. Feel the ribs flare on your inhale. 
commit to some core engagement on your exhale. Soften the knees to whatever level you need to. Lift and widen the sit bones. Notice if you're collapsing the shoulders down, see if you can find a little loft to underneath the armpits. And then take a step forward. Find your way back to your mat. Come up to stand. We'll find the front of our mat. Inhale, arms can come up or not. Take a deep breath. Exhale and melt back down. Leg around if you want, wiggle. Inhale for a halfway lift. Spread out the feet hip width apart. Exhale and come forward. Let's step our left foot back. Our right foot is going to come forward, come to a lunge. Feel the spine grow. Let's do the pose we often do in the beginning of class. So you can have that sense of moving from the length of your spine and also moving into the length of your legs. So forward. Bending your knee, chest is expansive, crown and tail and heel find lots of length with each other. And as you exhale, maintain that length. You can tuck your chin a little bit so you're not, you know, totally just extending the spine. But see what you can do to maintain length through your vertebrae. Moving with breath. Moving with yielding. Moving with radiating from the center of your body outward. And then coming back home into the center on your exhales. Find a lunge now. Steady yourself here. Extend the spine. So I have my hands on blocks, but you can have your hands on the floor or legs if you don't have blocks. All right, I'm going to rise up. Keep your hands on your hips for a moment. And just focus on the spine before we add the shoulders and arms into the mix. What does it feel like to grow, to lengthen your spine upward? Is there a way for your abdominal muscles to support your length of your spine? Is there a way for you to still breathe and let things go and be easy on your inhales through your core and recommit on your exhales? If you want to bring your arms up to the sky, feel free to bring your arms up to the sky, out to the side, whatever you're finding. If you're lifting the arms, Feel the extension through the body. What does it feel like to have that connection from your back foot to your hands in the air? All right, and then let's release our hands down to the ground. Take your front foot back, come to a plank. Okay, you can always put your knees down. If you need more support, always, always, you can put your knees onto the floor. There's no reason why you have to be in a full plank. If you are here, shoulders away from the ears, find your midline, rediscover your core strength as best as you can. So inhale to flare and soften a bit, find the ease, exhale to come into your strength. Where in your body can you find softness? Look to the place that you know you can ease, find ease quickly. Okay, and then we're gonna put our knees down if you need to. Now, even with your knees down, coming down to the floor can be hard on your shoulders. So if you really need extra support, bring your forearms down here and then come all the way down onto your belly. So you're not having to stay, um, stabilize with your shoulder at all. Take a deep breath, open the chest, cobra pose. Exhale and release back down. Back of the neck stays nice and long. Extend, how long can you keep your spine through this back bend? Exhale and release. One more time. Lengthening the tail, lengthening the crown, and then exhale and melt toward the floor. Pick your feet up and rock left and right, windshield wipering your feet, easing off your spine. Feel free to wiggle through your hips a little bit here. And then we're going to find our way back. Come on to all fours. One more time, finding the stable place in your body. When you're ready, let's take our left foot forward. Right foot is back now. Extend through the spine. Okay. Lift your back foot up off the floor. If you have blocks, you can find them again. Before we start moving, extend the spine. Imagine you have a rocket shooting out through your crown and another shooting out through your tail. See if you can feel your spine grow in space. And then let's begin to move with breath. 
squaring the hips the whole time. If you can straighten this, your leg, head bows. You can bend this, your knee, head lifts. Okay, just finding your breath as you move. Don't worry so much about how far you go in this posture. Stay present with the sensations that you're feeling. Move with yielding, move with breath. Move from the center outward. Move from the outward back to the center. So these principles of yielding and you know, that sense of navel radiation or being a starfish are very helpful for us to develop these qualities of stability and ease on a much deeper level than just muscular action. They include muscular action. Walk your back foot forward. Now we're gonna to come to a half lift with something. Put your hands high on blocks if you have them. Put your hand on your couch. Put your hand on a, on a bedside. You know, whatever you have, wherever you are in your house, there's something hopefully to put your hands on and extend into a half lift, a high half lift here. So the femur bones move back, taking them way back in the hip joints, soften the knees, grow the spine. What would it feel like to feel length on your inhale and engage supporting your core into your belly on your exhale, feeling that sense of deep um, stability on your exhales. And then let's melt. We forgot to do crescent lunge on that side, so we're gonna come back. Left foot is forward, right foot is back. Let's rise up. Again, bring our hands onto our hips. Okay, so find what you're finding here. Don't worry about how deep you go. If you wanna be up here, be up here. If you go really deep, you're like, oh, I gotta go deep. Make sure that your low back is not smushed in your depth. Always find stability and freedom and breath before going into depth postures. Maybe your arms wanna come up. Maybe they wanna have a different choice. Slide the shoulder blades down the back. Feel that sense of connecting the center of your body out to your limbs and back home. Is there a quality of yielding that you can give yourself? Are you moving your core with the breath? And then we'll go ahead and bring your back foot forward. Come into a halfway lift one more time. Exhale and float. Rise up, however that looks for you. We're gonna bring our toes to touch and come into chair pose here. We're gonna, you can bring your arms down. There's no reason why your arms have to be up. We're gonna find some twisting as we move, breathe. Inhale and lengthen the spine. Exhale, twisting to the right. Inhale, back up. Exhale, twisting to the left. Measure out where you want your arms to be in space. Your choice. Twisting. How's your core strength? Inhale back. Exhale, engage your core, square hips and knees. And then come on up. Arms to the sky. Take a deep breath, fold forward. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale and melt back down. Once again, let's take the right foot forward and the left foot back. Finding a lunge, you can always put your back knee on the floor if your body needs a little more ease. Okay, so if your breath is running away or you're feeling like you're locked in strength, take maneuvers, experiment, play in your postures. There's no like, I must be this way. See what's supporting you. If you listen to the inner speak of the body, you'll be guided way better than by anything I can say. Okay, so hug into the midline, feel the crown grow, feel the length of your spine. We're gonna inhale and come to a twist here. Maybe your hand wants to stay on your knee, maybe your arm wants to lift in the air. Okay, so decide how you wanna be. With this back leg, keep lifting the femur bone up so that you're not collapsing that leg down toward the floor. Even if your knee is on the floor, you can be lifting the hip up and back as you extend the spine and breathe to twist. Stay rooted through the front big toe mound. Feel the growing spine. And then exhale and release the hands down and come back to a plank or any other choice you want to make. Heart is forward, shoulder blades are broad. Drop the shoulders away from the ears. Lift the inner thighs up toward the sky. 
Feel that sense of expansion on your inhales, drawing in toward the midline on your exhales. And then put your knees down. Any kind of way you want to get to the floor, whatever is supportive for your body. Put your hands under your forehead for a moment. Take a breath. Let the chest soften. Let the spine soften. Feel the spine move on the breath. Now you're just doing a little cross lateral work here. So arms can come up, arms can come down, arms can come out. One arm can come up, wherever you want to be. Take a deep breath in. We're going to lift right leg and left arm. Find that sense of stability. Cross those lines again. Feel the sash of your lats and your glutes, the sash of your core. And then place that arm and leg down, second side. Lift the leg. Make sure you're stable through your core to support this. Can you feel that connection between the glutes and the lats, between the front body, ribs, and hip? And then release and relax. Come back, come up onto all fours. Have a moment here, maybe a cacao, maybe some spinning hip circles, maybe moving your head around, whatever feels good in your body. Okay, from here, we're going to take the <clears throat> left foot forward and the right foot back now. Extend through the spine. And by the way, you can always have your hand on a block. So if you have a block and you have, um, want to be higher to give more length to the spine, you can always have your hand higher. Extend, open things up. You can put your back knee onto the floor if you want. Find the breath as you begin to twist. Arm can be anywhere you want it to be. It can be on the hip, it can be up in the air. Move the collarbones broadly away from each other. Keep lifting your right thigh up in the air. So, snug up to the midline with your inner thighs, root into your feet. Give the yielding into your feet and your hand and reach into the spine when you push back. So yield and push into the spine, long spine. Find your breath as you twist to the side. How are your obliques helping you? And then let's relax and bring our hand back down onto the ground. Come onto your back for a moment. We're going to lie down on our back. Before we come back up, okay, just take a moment. We're just going to wake up the obliques a little bit with some abdominal work. We need them for twisting. So you can do this a few different ways. We can do it with our legs straight and we can do it with our legs bent. You can do it with your hands behind your head. You can do it with your arms down at your sides. There's so, lots of choices here. Okay, so finding your way, we're gonna drop, I'm gonna hit my foot on my table. So we're going to drop the right leg down and lift the left chest up toward the knee. Did I say left chest, I meant right chest. Switch, okay, so we're turning toward our leg in the air, whether your leg is bent or straight, just going back and forth. So your obliques twist you. They also side bend you. These are obliques right in the ribs, the center of the body. And we need them for twisting. So just notice, notice if your head is taking the brunt of what you're doing. Try not to pull on your head. See if you can keep the elbows broad and let the chest do the moving from side to side. And if your arms are down at your sides and not a part of the equation, that's fine. You might need to keep your, you might need to just lift your um, arms up off the floor to switch sides. And your head can stay down too. Okay, so a couple of more. I'm only bending my knee as I go so I don't hit my table. All right, and then relax. Bring your knees into your chest and rock a little bit. Just see what's here. Can you find some ease? Chances are you didn't find much of it in the poses we just did. So replace that energy in your body now. Feed it to yourself. And then let's go ahead and roll over onto our sides again. All right, so finding the breath. Come up to stand. Okay, come to the front of your mat. Inhale, maybe your arms come up, maybe they don't. Exhale and fold forward. Lean evenly into your feet. Let's try that one more time. Bending up and then bending down. 
Let's come back to chair pose, but this time we're gonna take our hands to our heart, no longer over our head. And we have a couple of choices here. We can turn and not hook elbows and just find a view over to the side. Now watch what happens. This happens, you know, where our hips and our knees kind of go offline. See what it feels like to keep the knees and the hips aligned and turn just the chest. Come back, we're gonna do it twice, so maybe everybody do this variation first. Learning to find the core while you're here. Exhale to twist. Inhale to lengthen the spine. Find the stability and roots in your legs. Find freedom, maybe in your neck and shoulders and face. And then come back to center. Let's take a moment break, stand up. And as you're ready, when we come down again, this time when we twist, we're gonna hook an elbow. Now anytime we hook um, bone on bone, we run the risk of pushing our spine into too deep of twists. So make sure that you're coming into a place of guided twist. So you want your obliques to do the twisting on your exhales. The spine stays really long on your inhales. Notice what your knees are doing. Try not to push them off to the side. The most important thing you can do here is lengthen your spine and breathe. Come all the way back up. Arms extend. Exhale. Let's find the second side. Hook the elbow. Now notice what your shoulder ends up doing. Is it real rounded? Can you open it up? Spread open the collarbones. Knees, ankles, and hips are facing forward. The spine grows on your inhale. The twist happens on your exhale. Broaden the collarbones. Slide the shoulder blades down the back. Keep growing the spine. All right, and then ready? Arms up or not. Take a deep breath. Exhale, fold forward. Step back to a plank. Find your strength. Maybe put your knees down. Hey, you can always do any modified action here. Breathe fully. All right, and then we're going to put our knees down onto the ground. We are gonna do a pretty stringent posture for our shoulders so you can make a different choice. We're gonna come into a side forearm plank. This is a great way to kind of create that um, kinesthetic awareness for the obliques in a different way than twisting. So we're gonna come with our forearm facing the, um, you know, toward, um, if you're on the long edge of your mat, you're facing the side edge of your mat. All right, so find your breath. You can do this a couple of ways. You can inhale to lift up and come into a classic forearm balance. If that's too much, take your top leg and put it on the floor like this, flat and lift up so that you have some stability. If that's still not right for you, try keeping the, bat the bottom leg on the floor and just stretch the top leg. So there's lots of ways to modify to make this functional for your body. Try to hug your forearm and whatever is happening on the floor, your feet or your hip or your foot. Just hug them toward each other as you find the length of your spine. Deep breaths here. And then let's come down and rest on the floor. So we're going to switch around and do the second side. So forearm is on the ground, legs are on the floor. Either choose to lift up where our two feet are on the ground or our foot is on the ground and our forearm's on the ground. You can take the top foot on the floor like this to find just a little bit more stability. And if that's too much, put the bottom hip on the floor and stretch the top leg. So you choose your variation of this posture. Your other arm can come up. Now hug whatever's touching the floor toward each other. Breathe, forearm toward your lower body, lower body toward your forearm. Extend the spine. Okay, and then go ahead and release. To come out of that posture, come into child's pose. Arms up or down, you decide what's best for you. Deep breaths in, deep exhale away. Dog pose when you're ready. Find the length of your spine here. Find the stability of your shoulder blades on your ribs, but not so much that you lock your breath down. So once again, finding stable forces that are balanced with ease. See what you can explore. How's your face? Can your face give some ease to your body? Okay, 
All right, let's lift the right leg up in the air. Hips are square. And then we're going to bring that foot forward um, to a lunge. Shorten up your stance. Blocks are so nice if you have them. Right foot is forward and left foot is back. Come on up. Okay, extend through the spine. Reaching the arms. Okay, so reaching the arms upward. Okay, and then bring your hands onto your hips to extend a little bit. So find your breath here. Find the extension of the spine. There's a lot of work in your glutes and your hamstring to hold you here. See if you can make your legs do some of the burden instead of your back. Engage your core again on your exhales. Come all the way back up. Zip up the front line of your body, pubic bone to navel to heart to chin. And then exhale. And this time, if you have props, a chair, or blocks, you can bring your hands down to rest on something. Hips are square. Elongate the spine. Grow it as far out as you can. Inhale to expand. Exhale to engage. So even though now that we're resting on something, our hamstring doesn't have to work in as much and it mostly stretches, can you still feel that sense there's a flex stretch? So you might want to push your heel down and drag it back isometrically. Great. And then walk your back foot forward. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale and melt back down. Climb up. Big breath here. Exhale, take your right foot back. Your left foot is now forward. Come into um, a shorter stance than a lunge. Hands on hips. You can always interlace your hands behind your back to do this too. There's so many choices. Extend the spine. Go ahead and also try not to be, whoa, don't be on a tightrope. Take your left foot out to the left as much as you need to to feel stable. Find the breath and start to tip over the edge. Even, even though there's work here, extend the spine. Inhale to lengthen the spine. Exhale to engage the core. Feel the work of that front leg, your glutes, your hamstring. Notice if you want to hyperextend your knee, have some softness there. Keep shooting the rockets from your crown and tail. Allow the heads of the arm bones to lift back. So try not to collapse. Okay, and then inhale, come back. Reaching the arms up if you want. Extend, zip up that whole front line of the body, draw it up, and then come forward and bring your hands onto blocks. Okay, finding the breath. If a chair, if you have a chair, putting your hands on a chair or the edge of your couch, whatever you got. Okay, hips are square, root through the front big toe, keep extending the spine on the inhale, feeling the core engage on your exhales. And put your hands down onto the floor. Swing that left leg up and back and come down to dog pose. Bend your knees and elbows and hug in toward the center of the body. Feel that contraction on your exhales. Inhale to expand outward. A couple of times. It's a little weird, but just experiment. Exhale to draw in. Maybe elbows and knees find the core. Inhale, expand, feel the yield push. Okay, when we're ready, come forward into a plank. You can put your knees down to support you. Find the stable forces, find the length of the spine. And then let's go ahead and find our way to the floor. You get to experiment and do any back bend that you want to do. Anything that feels good in your body, you get to do. Arms can be up, arms can be down, body can be on the floor and just resting, anything you want. And then let's come back up onto all fours. One more time, have some wiggles through your hips, some circles, whatever feels good. And you know, you can skip, the, we go through a lot of dog poses, but you know we're going somewhere, so you can just skip the dog pose and go back into a lunge if you want. And so if you, but if you like to move from dog pose, go ahead and come on up. Feel that extension through the spine. Lift the left leg up in the air again. I'm sorry, the right leg. Lift the right leg up in the air again. Take a breath. Find extension. Breathe into extension. And then go ahead and transition gently. Bring your foot forward. 
back up your foot so your stance is not so wide or not so long and come up to stand. Revolved triangle pose. Reaching the arm up in the air, the left arm. Take a breath, come forward. Hand comes onto a block. Square the hips, inner thighs roll back a bit so the sit bones can widen. Find the length of your spine. Feel all the little vertebrae, find their space. Plump up your discs. See if you can give all the juice to your discs. Make them broad and big. And then twist with your breath. Twist with your core, with your obliques. Use your exhales to find the twisting action. The inhales to grow the spine. Feel the roots of your feet yield. And as you yield and then push, push into the length of your spine. Maybe you want to keep your hand on your hip. Maybe your arm wants to reach in the air. With your hand or arm on the ground or on a block, open up, head of the arm bone back, collarbone broad. How are your inner thighs? Can you roll them back, widening the sit bones? Stay rooted through the front big toe. And then let's release and melt back. Come into a halfway lift. Spine gets longer. Find your breath again. Exhale and melt back down. Let's step our right foot back. Our left foot stays forward. Find a shorter stance than a lunge. Long spine here. When you're ready, come on up. Bring your hands onto your hips. Widen your feet out. So if you need a little more space, you can go more left, right. This creates a lot of stability in the pelvis. Keep your hand on your hip, your left hand on your left hip. Right arm can come up in the air if you want. Exhale and find the length. Find the length. Engage through your hamstring, your core, your glutes. And when you get your hand down on something, and if you have two blocks, you can come higher. If you have a chair, you can you know, just find something. Be um, creative with your propping. Extend the spine. Then find the twist. Every inhale, extend the spine. Every ex exhale, let the obliques do the twisting for you. As your obliques start to twist you, you may find that you lose contact with your big toe mound and your thigh wants to externally rotate. So internally rotate the left thigh. Stay rooted in the left big toe. Reach that hip back. Widen the sit bones and then refine the obliques while stabilizing the front leg like that. Stay grounded through the back foot too. Can you find the yield into the earth and the push through the spine? Rockets, crown and tail. Maybe your arm comes in the air, maybe it doesn't. Shoulder blades are moving down the back as the collarbones broaden and smile open. Maybe you wanna turn your head, maybe you don't. Exhale on the, or twist on the exhales. Lengthen the spine on the inhale. Okay, and then let's go ahead and release back. Last of the dog poses, maybe you wanna skip it. Okay, lift that leg all the way up in the air. Find your breath, left leg high. Place your foot down onto the ground and come onto your knees. Okay, let's come to our back. Finding our way. Anytime you do a twisting sequence, it's really good to do some gentle back bending afterwards to stabilize the sacrum. You know, twisting can kind of mess with your pelvis a little bit if you don't keep a balanced pelvis. So this is just a little insurance policy to make sure that we kind of stay um, neutral. So heels close in, bridge pose is a perfect pose for this. We're going to inhale and lift up our pelvis. Our arms can come down. They can interlace if they want. They can also just move into the floor. Feel your feet root, the big toe mounds, the inner heels, the outer pinky toes, and the outer heels. All four points are evenly pressured. Is the back of the neck loose and free? Try not to push. Discover your breath here. Discover the work of the glutes, the work of the inner thighs. Imagine you have a block between your thighs or even take a block between your thighs. Imagine you also have some hands on your outer knees to push against. So we're moving in lots of planes, hugging into the midline, hugging away from the midline, hugging our glutes and also pushing our feet away so our quads kick in. So just experiment to find the forces that stabilize you here. 
Sense your sacroiliac joints. Let them have a nice firm hug. Big breaths. Where are you stable? Where are you free? Find free. Find it somewhere. Find stable somewhere. Memorize and observe the feeling in your body. I'm going to slowly lower our pelvis down to the floor. Resist the urge to bring your knees into your chest for a moment. Let's just find a neutral spine for a sec. You can move your feet a little further away from your pelvis if you want so they're a little more easeful. Deep breath into the length of your spine. All right, now, if you have a blanket or a block to rest upon, we're going to do the same pose, but passively. So you can get something that's firm underneath you. I wouldn't put like a mushy pet pillow underneath you. Whatever you have that's kind of firm and broad, so your whole pelvis is on it. So if you're on a block, make sure that you're on the whole width of the block instead of the narrow surface of the block. Okay, find your breathing. You do not have to be high. Matter of fact, it's better to be a little on the lower side. So if you're like, oh, I'm going to go as high as I can, get everything I can underneath there, back away from that, and just let your pelvis be lifted a bit and finding ease. Now, everybody's a little different what their needs are here. So if you like this, stay here. If you want to stretch both your legs and get into some opening of the hip flexors, we did a lot of hip flexion. So if this feels delicious, do it. And if it does not, don't do it. You can also try one leg at a time. Make sure you're not running the risk of, of disarming the sacrum that we just set, okay? So you don't want the pelvis to shift. You wanna keep things neutral, even if you're doing one leg up and one leg down. Okay, so you experiment with what feels best in your body. Make sure that you feel supported. Arms can go anywhere. Deep breaths here. All right, and then we're going to bring our knees into our chest. Stay on your prop, blanket, or bolster, or block, and just feel that traction along the low back, knees into the chest. The spine is still long. You want to cross one thigh over the other. This is a nice way to get into the hips a little bit. You can even, you know, just find wherever you cross, whatever's comfortable for the body. How is your breath? Two legs straight up in the air. And then let's cross the other way. Allowing the hips to stretch a little bit. You can even hold your feet to deepen the stretch in your, in your hips instead of your knees. So whatever feels good in your body. And then we're going to unwind. Go ahead and take the bolster out of there. Before Shavasana, let's just take a few breaths in Supta Baddha Konasana. Soles of the feet together, knees splaying out to the side. Just letting the hip flexors soften a little bit. If you need support, take blocks or blankets underneath your knees or your hip or your thighs so that you're supported in the posture if you need it. Just two or three breaths here. Melt. Long spine. And find your way into Shavasana. Straighten your legs. If you feel vulnerable in your back at all, which you might after twists, just make sure you support. Put some props underneath your knees. Turn around. This might feel really good if you have your calves up on a chair or a couch. It's a nice neutral way of letting your spine relax. So just find whatever position that is right for you for Shavasana. 
And just begin to melt the body. Shoulders are soft. Let your spine spread out now without having to, you know, encourage the elongation. Just let it spread out into elongation. Kind of like water when you, you know, pour it into a pan, it just spreads right out. So let your body be liquid. Brain soft, the eyes soft. Shoulders relax on the floor, breathing deeply, feeling that expansive, surrendered state, the steadiness of the earth below you, the ease of your body resting. As you're ready, let's begin to know the sensations of the body again. So don't move just yet, just sense into what it feels like to drop your weight into the floor, to observe the sensations in your body, what it feels like to have ease and surrender. That's my nail being dropped. My nail slot, sorry for the noise. All right, and as you're ready, deepen the breath, stretch and move in any way that serves you best. You can eventually find your way onto your side. Guide yourself up with your arms. Take your time. And as you come to a comfortable seat, See if you can once again play with this feeling of balancing sense of steadiness in the body, a sense of ease in the body. And notice if this translates into the mind. Does your mind feel steady? Does your mind feel easy? Just enjoy any integration that you've cultivated. 
Let's bring our palms together at our heart. Offer your intentions outward, your prayers, your love, your care. Namaste. Thank you, everyone.